I was in the in the room uh, when she had him, and it, if I remember right, I'm not sure the hours, but it was hours and hours of it, overnight, and it was the first child for both of us. And uh, he came out, and I'm standing there at her head, and I'm watching, and he come out, and I couldn't really see him, and then he, somebody said, "Oh, it's a boy." Immediately after that, uh, you know, you could hear all this commotion down there. And then they say, here he is. Okay, we got to take him. He's got a few breathing problems. And off he went. An hour or two later, they let us go in there and they had him in the breathing compartment thing. His legs were like up here. His toes are here where my hands are. So he's just folded in half. I, there are so many things that went through my head. I never would have anticipated having a, a child that was handicapped, especially that severely. He said he'll never walk. Uh, he'll, it's going to be a real tough life. As far back as I can remember as a little kid, I loved watching the Olympics. I thought it was so cool for an athlete to be, to be there and to be representing their country and you know, representing you know, what their country is about. My name is Nick Taylor. I'm from Wichita, Kansas. I'm 38 years old. Um, I've lived here my entire life. I uh, am a volunteer assistant coach for the men's tennis team here. I teach in the sport management department and I play wheelchair tennis professionally and I've been a member of Team USA since uh, 2000. I always used to see this guy would fly behind me in his wheelchair and it said zippy on the back. And th that's exactly what he just zips from one end to the next and he's constantly on the go. Nick always is ready to do a lot of things. Like he wants to do everything sometimes he can do all of it, so he just wants to prove you that he can. One of the things that uh, I've always admired about Nick was the fact that he 
he wasn't ever willing to give up. If he met a challenge that he, he just couldn't accomplish right away, he worked at it and he would work to make it work for him. Anything we do, he is, he's looking to compete, he's looking to play, and he's looking to win. He's extremely uh, competitive and uh, is always trying to find a way and doesn't ever use um, his disability as an excuse. And so I, th I think just his presence is probably one of the, the, the greatest things um, that the guys take um, from Nick. I knew he plays tennis and I knew that he's on the wheelchair and I knew that he's really good at what he does. And when I came here the first and I saw him, I actually couldn't believe he, like, I didn't know how he plays tennis. I think Nick has gotten to this level in tennis from self-determination and downright stubbornness and um, which that's a good quality. I, I mean that in a good way. He's going up against opponents who have advantages that he doesn't. So he has to, you know, mentally outsmart them, be many steps ahead of them. I mean, it's truly incredible. He actually understands tennis more than I would say anybody around here right now. So it's absolutely amazing what he does. I get surprised by him a lot too. So um, don't take him for granted. The serve that he's crafted um, and launching the ball from his foot to then serve and, and put the ball in play. That's a remarkable level of, of innovation. And um, in that sense, I think he's, he's a game changer in the sport. I'd say our relationship with Nick is just natural. He's basically my mentor and my friend and my big brother. It gives us some different perspectives on what works, what doesn't work, you know, the involvement of uh, being in the wheelchair community and wheelchair sports, stuff like that, where, you know, Colin would have never got those opportunities because we have never would never had that resource or avenue to follow. There's really no boundaries with Nick. He's really, um, uh, he'll find a way. Nick is a trick. <laughs> Tricky Nick. <laughs>
Shortly after that, I might back up. I might be nine or 10 feet from the door and I just kept getting stronger and stronger. Don't be afraid to fail. Nothing I've tried that was really worth getting worked right on the first try. Most of it didn't work right on the hundredth try, but it takes a long, 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 long time. And again, going back to the instant gratification that society wants now, people feel like if it doesn't immediately work, they don't want to do it. They don't want to fail. Several years ago, our, our college asked Nick to serve as our commencement speaker for, for spring commencement. For um, our, our graduates ranged from students that were uh, getting degrees in teacher education to exercise science and sport management. He was just talking about his experience getting into tennis as his sport and beginning to build his skill set. And he talked about the fact that he had lofty aspirations, but he also spent some time talking about the hours and hours that he spent hitting tennis balls against his garage door. And so his big takeaway for our students that day wasn't just what are your dreams, what are your aspirations, the other big takeaway was what's your garage door?